This is a 3-speed manual transmission. And this is a 19-speed manual transmission. I showcased it in my last manual transmission video. But how many speeds can a manual transmission have? Or more specifically, how many different individual gear ratios can we have? And is there any special way to make it more compact? And how exactly will it work? In order to fully appreciate this design, it's really important to understand exactly how it works. It all starts with a classic gearbox stand and a whole lot of gears. For this design, I'm actually using square carbon fiber rods for the axles. Some of the gears will have round holes and other gears will have square holes. These gears all have round holes and can freely rotate around the square rod. And in between each one of these gears, I'll be placing a white smaller gear that has a square hole. This smaller gear will be fixed to the rod and will rotate with the rod and transfer any torque. I'll show you exactly how this works in a bit. And if you watched my previous manual transmission video, the one with 19 speeds, you might have an idea of where this is going. So once again, you can see all of these gears can rotate freely. They're the gears with round holes on the square rod. Now these next gears all have square holes, which means they'll be fixed to the square carbon fiber rod. So now if I spin the axle in the back, you can see all of the gears are spinning. Remember, the gears in the back have square holes. They're fixed to the carbon fiber rod. And I could freely spin the axle in the front without any gears spinning. Underneath this white coupler gear, there's a small gear that's fixed to the rod. I could slide it over to engage a certain gear. So now let's see this in action. I'll place a piece of tape on the output side of the gearbox. And once again, when none of the couplers are engaged, the front axle rod could freely rotate. This is going to be a multi-stage manual transmission, and you'll see what that means in a little bit as well. So now let's engage the first gear set. This is a one-to-one -one gear set. For every one time I spin the input, the output spins one time. Now if I move the coupler, we're shifting gears. And in this setup, we already have 12 different speeds. We're going from a one-to-one -one gear ratio, all the way up to a two to one gear ratio. So I'll try to make it really clear what exactly is happening here. The front square axle has small white gears that are meshed to it. When I move the white coupler over, it's meshed now with the tiny white gear and a colored gear. And even though all of the gears are always spinning, only that gear set that's meshed with the white small gear and the white coupler is technically engaged. You can see that it's actually working because every time I spin the input, the output is getting faster and faster. The last gear ratio, the 12th one, has almost a two to one gear ratio. So basically every time I spin the front axle, the axle in the back will spin almost twice as fast. And of course we don't want to be shifting gears by moving the couplers by hand. So I have this linkage system that I developed. So now instead of having to manually move the couplers back and forth, we can move these linkages. And I think it's pretty easy to see how this works. And this is basically how every manual transmission works. But we're going to take it to the next level. But not too fast. In order to fully appreciate it, we must know how it works. How can we multiply these first 12 gears? How can we significantly increase the number of gear ratios? Well, this is where the second gearbox stand comes into play. Now I'm going to add these mega gear multipliers. Now because of how heavy these gears are, they're very satisfying to spin. With no couplers engaged, it's in neutral. Let's put it into gear and hear how it sounds. So now we can switch in and out of gear. But the mega multiplier gears still need their secondary gears to complete the gear sets. And as you can see, the gear ratios are starting to get pretty big. Now you may notice here that some of the pieces are breaking as I'm assembling it. And this will be a good time to show you something really important about designing things for 3D printing. A 3D printer prints a three-dimensional object layer by layer. 
Here's a time lapse of my 3D printer 3D printing one of the parts for this project. And here's the actual part that broke during assembly. This is how I sliced it for 3D printing. A slicer is a computer program that prepares a 3D model for 3D printing. It's an intermediary step between the 3D modeling program and the actual printing. 3D printed parts are notoriously weak along layer lines, so if you apply a force like this to the top of this part, it could easily snap. So instead of slicing the object tall like this, it would have been better to slice it laying down like this. That way, when you apply a force, there's no layer lines for it to break on. Because that's exactly what happened right here. I apply a force and it snaps right on the layer line. So instead, I could have 3D printed it in this orientation. That way, the horizontal layers would have been much stronger. However, there's a trade-off of having to 3D print it with supports. And I really try to avoid printing with supports whenever possible because supports are extremely annoying. But this section right here would have been much stronger. So now we have the two stages. The first stage with 12 individual gear ratios and the second stage with the mega gear multipliers. This thing is a beast. It's a 12 speed manual transmission with dual shifters that utilizes a 12 speed front box and a five speed high gear ratio multiplier back box. And yes, I made up all of those terms, but it makes it sound really cool. But we still don't know how this monstrosity actually works and does it even work? So here's the basic theory. We start off with a one to one gear ratio. And then as we move down, it slowly goes to a two to one gear ratio. You can see as we go down the line of gears, the gears on the right get smaller and the gears on the left get bigger. And we have a total of 12 individual gear sets. So right away, we already have 12 different gear ratios or 12 different speeds. I could freely spin the input shaft. That means the entire contraption's in neutral. And now we can move the shifter like we did earlier in the video to switch gears. This is first gear. The input and the output are exactly the same. And now we can switch to second gear. And then to third gear. Now let's go into fourth gear. And we can continue all the way up. go all the way up until finally we get to 12th gear. 12th gear is almost a 2 to 1 gear ratio. So now here's where the mega speed gear multiplier comes into play. This is the 2x multiplier, then we have a 4x, 8x, and then 16x multiplier. Alright, so buckle down because this is where it gets a little bit math intensive. So the front box basically always goes from 1 to 1 gear ratio to a 1 to 2 gear ratio. And the back box just multiplies it. So going through the front box, we have 12 speeds from a one to one gear ratio to a two to one gear ratio. And this is with a one X multiplier. It's a one X multiplier because these gears are one to one. Then we can shift the back box to a two to one gear ratio. So now everything's multiplied by two. And then we can shift to the four X multiplier and the front box will get multiplied by four. And we could also multiply it by eight and 16. So we put it all together and we could go all the way from a one to one gear ratio all the way up to a 32 to one gear ratio with 12 steps for every multiplier. So 12 times five equals 60 speeds. Okay, but does it actually work? Let's test it out and go through all 60 speeds. The linkages for the multiplier gears aren't really engaging that well, as you can see. However, you can see that the output is starting to spin faster and faster. I'm rotating the input shaft the same each time, not very much, but you can see that the output is spinning a lot. 
It's actually insane how many different gear ratios you could fit in such a relatively small package. And at the high gear ratios, the gears really start grinding and acting weird. And once again, when I'm just barely spinning the input, the output is really spinning a lot. And this is with the 16x multiplier. And now the piece of tape is really flying. Despite it being difficult to get the linkages to work properly, it did in theory work really well. And I'm surprised with how simple the design actually is. I hope you were able to learn something new in this video and get a better understanding of how manual transmissions work and how you could better design for 3D printing. And once again, I'd like to thank my friends over at Micro Center for sponsoring this video. Right now, you can still get $100 off a Creality Ender 3 Pro, one of the world's most popular 3D printers ever. The Creality Ender 3 Pro is still one of the best budget 3D printers. This deal is available for new customers and in-store purchases only. I highly recommend taking advantage of this deal if you haven't already. Micro Center is your one-stop shop for everything 3D printing, PC building, electronics, and even video recording equipment and more. Check out all the links in the description. Thanks for watching and happy printing.